to enter into your gates with thanksgiving and to your courts with praise. We come to magnify you. We come to bless your holy name. Hallelujah. For there's none like you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We praise you. We praise you. We praise you. Praise the Lord and good morning to each and every one of you who have come to join us on the World Wide Web this morning. Thanks be to God who giveth us the strength and the grace to wake up and see another day. As we come now to the end of another year that God has kept us, blessed us. I don't know about you, but I look back and I look at the times and I say, thank God that we serve such an awesome God who is able to bring us forth and has brought us forth and he deserves all of our praise. He deserves all of our worship. He deserves all of our strength, all of our might, for he has done great things in our lives and he can do anything and will do everything but fail because he sees to his children and he loves us. Let's look to the Lord. Father in heaven, we thank you once again for keeping us. Thank you for waking us up this morning, Lord, to a brand new beautiful day. Oh God, for the strength that you've given us. Thank you, Lord, because this morning you woke us up with our mind to serve you, a mind to worship you, a mind to come out to your house, a mind, Lord, to lift up your holy name. And we take it not for granted because you are God. Now we ask, Lord, that your presence will be here today in this service. Lord, come down now, Father, for we need you now, Lord, to move, to live, and to have, Lord, hallelujah, your way throughout this year. Now blessed be your name forever and ever. Lord, touch every sick body, raise up every down spirit. Oh God, and take the control, hallelujah, of each and every situation and let it be a blessing to your people. This we ask in Jesus' name, amen. This morning our scripture is coming to us from the eighth chapter of the division of the Psalms. Here readeth the word of the living God. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightest steal the enemy and the avenger. When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, yea, the beast of the field, the fowl of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatsoever passed it through the paths of the seas. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all, in all the earth. Give God great praise for all he has done. Come on, just lift him up right here. Oh Lord, how excellent is your name in all of the earth. Oh Lord, how excellent is your name in all of the earth.
Father, we thank you for the freedom to worship you. We thank you for the freedom to magnify you. We thank you for the freedom to give you worship. We thank you for the freedom to clap our hands. We thank you for the freedom to give you praise. We thank you for the freedom to lift our voices. Come on, Candace, let's go.
you're free there is victory
but come on, say this to me. Hallelujah. Come on, say it. Say that in your space. With tears rolling down your face, open your mouth and declare that you have the victory. With a heart full of pain, open your mouth and declare that you have the victory. With pain racking through your body, your mouth and declare victory belongs to Jesus. Come on, say that again. Declare it in your space. Fill up your atmosphere.
That's worship. That is 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 worship. The Bible declares to bring your tithing and your offering. Bring your tithing and your offering. Somebody said, what's the tithing? The tithing is a 10% of your increase. 10% of your increase. A dime on every dollar. You said, why should I give God a dime of every dollar? Because every dime that you have belongs to him anyway. Amen. I would rather give God a dime out of every dollar than for him to give me a dime, period. Because of what God has done for us, because of how God not only has blessed us financially or given us increase, but because of what he has done for us in our bodies, in our homes, and he has blessed us, he has done things for us that money cannot do. So we owe him a praise and we owe him a thanksgiving. And one way that we can do that is he touches us right where we, where it hurts us the most. And that's usually in our pocket. And he says to give, bring your tithing and your offering unto the Lord. Our pastor is asking us to make sure that we remember that Christmas is coming 
but don't put all of your money in Santa's hat because Santa can't do anything for you but God can so why not put it in the hat first put it in the hat first that can do something for you so we encourage you we encourage you uh, to the membership of Mount Calvary Pentecostal Church remember your pastor is asking you to bring your, your tithing and your offering into the storehouse and to those of you our friends and our neighbors that have been watching this ministry and it has been a blessing unto you we're not encouraging to you to give your tithing if you have a church home your tithing belongs to your church home but we're asking you if you will sow a seed into this good ground sow a seed into this good ground and declare that what has been given unto you has blessed your heart and has blessed your mind in the name of the Lord Jesus pastor is asking this morning to the membership if you would in addition to your tithing if you would give $30 in the offering your tithing plus $30 in your offering your tithing plus $30 in your offering you should be able to see the giving ways that are on the screen even now you can go to cash app you can go to give the and you can even mail it in to 1812 Oak Hill Avenue and you can also drop it by the church office um, and would there be somebody here to receive that for you but as we're getting ready to go into the word of the Lord, we're going to ask you to continue, to continue to pray, praying for our pastor and praying for this assembly, praying for our sister churches as the word of God is going forth, is going forth. Now the word of the Lord comes to us in the name of the Lord Jesus from the man of God that God has anointed in this time and in this season in this time and in this season to speak a word to speak a word a word of encouragement a word of life a word of lifting even to remind us of God so without any further ado I present to you the man of God none other than Elder Craig Gilchrist come on put your hands together I want you to put some emoji signs some love signs in the box and I want you to greet Elder Craig Gilchrist I lift my hands in total adoration unto you. You reign on the throne, for you are God and God. Because of you, my cloudy days are gone. I can sing to you this song. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. I live. the house. 
household of faith. Indeed, it is a privilege and an honor to be able to stand before you, the people of God, and to have this opportunity to share with you in the word of the Lord. We bring you greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we are pleased to greet you in Jesus' name. Johnny, just keep that soft for me. We're thankful to be home, back in the house of God. You know, it took Dorothy going through storms, meeting up with a cowardly lion, a straw man and a tin man, walking down the yellow brick road to get to the land of the Wizard of Oz, having to confront witches and warlocks. It took her going through all of that to realize there's no place like home. And I'm standing here to tell you there is no place like home. And I'm glad to be back in the house of God. And we do give honor to God, who is the head of our life, and to our pastor, our illustrious pastor, the dynamic, didactic, preaching storm, Bishop C. Sean Tyson. Come on, let's give God a praise. You at home, come on, put your hands together and give God a praise for your pastor. And to the great woman of God who stands by his side, who can teach, preach, sing, pray, and her energy level is just phenomenal. I'm, I, I, you know we have to cover her in prayer because she, you know, uh, 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 who's the poet that came up with, she's a phenomenal woman? Maya Angela. She's a phenomenal woman and to her, Lady Krista Tyson, Evangelist Krista Tyson, we salute you in Jesus' name. We thank God for her and to all of you who have come to the house of God to share with us in the word of the Lord. Now, I have been directed by God to invite your attention to 1 Thessalonians, it's fifth chapter. And praise team, thank you so much. You have done a wonderful job. I don't leave. I'm gonna let you go, but don't leave. Thank you. 1 Thessalonians, its fifth chapter, shall serve as the textual environment for this morning's message. And certainly we do solicit your prayers. Johnny, stay right there. Thank you. Now I have to do, I have to be obedient to God and do something that I do not normally in ministry do. And that is I've got a little bit of reading to do. But God told me to read the whole thing. And I'm sure you will receive the revelation of it as we get underway. 1 Thessalonians, it's fifth chapter, and I invite you to join me in the scripture reading. Because I have so much to read, I am not going to ask you to get up off of your couch, to get out of your bed, or to stand up. Just sit and read with, and read with me in deference to the word of the Lord. 
and it reads as follows. Because God has made me an end time minister, the text comes to us in this end time. But of the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. Why? Because to everything according to the ecclesiastical writer, there is a season and a time to every purpose under the sun. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But you, brethren, but you, brethren, are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. You are the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us, who are of the day, be sober. Let me say that again. Let us, who are of the day, be sober. Putting on the breastplate of faith and love and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another even as also you do. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake and be at peace among yourselves. Hmm. and be at peace among yourselves. Know them that labor among you and admonish you and esteem them very highly. If you got a pastor and a first lady like us, they're worthy of our esteem 
because they labor diligently for us. Come on, saints of the Most High God, wherever you are, put your hands together for your pastor and your first lady. Come on, you can do God better than that for your pastor and your first lady. Now we exhort you, brethren. Warn them that are unruly. Hmm. You know, COVID has had us separated from one another. And while you may have been out of my sight, the scripture said, warn them that are unruly. You've not been out of God's sight. So while I'm not seeing you, God is seeing you. Now, I can't help you if you think that you're getting away with it. But this passage of scripture told me to give you a warning. And I'm telling you right now, brother, leave that sister alone. She's not your wife. Brother, go home to your wife. She ain't married to you. Husbands, love your wives. Has Christ loved the church? I'm preaching already. Wives, stop being mean to your husbands. Children, obey them that have the rule over you that your days may be extended. The scripture said, warn them that are unruly. While I can't see you, God still sees you. Comfort the feeble-minded. Support the weak. Be patient toward all men. See that none render evil for evil unto any man. Now, while, that, while this entire passage has been for the body of Christ, this particular one was written for Elder Gilchrist. Because had it not been for the salvation of God, you see, we're getting ready to come into a time where some things from hell have been released. They've already been released. And see, I'm like this. When you come after family and you hurt family, while I'm saved, it takes the Holy Ghost to keep me that way. Because I'm one of those kind of guys that want you hurt, and then I want you dead. I'm, I'm just trying to confess. I, I, I want to see you in pain. And then I want to kill you. So it's the Holy Ghost that keeps me under. And he says here, see that none render evil for evil unto any man. But ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to how many men? all men here now we enter into the text and the centrality of our thought verses 16 17 and 18 rejoice evermore pray without ceasing in everything give thanks a few weeks ago, we entered into a season, not just a day, but a season of thanksgiving. In everything, give thanks. 
but this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Now, let me conclude this chapter with these instructions. Quench not the spirit. Do not despise prophesying. Saints of the Most High God, in this season that we have entered into spiritually, prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Let me say that again. Abstain from all appearance of evil. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God your whole spirit, your soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. Brethren, pray for us. Come on, tell your neighbor, pray for us. Come on, look them in the eye and tell them, I need your prayers. Pray for us. Greet all the brethren with a holy kiss. And here's why I did what I did. I charge you by the Lord Jesus that this epistle be read unto all the holy brethren. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you and all the people of God said, Amen. Father, speak to our hearts. Illuminate our steps and lighten our way. Let now thy servant do no harm to your word, but let thy word find a lodging place in these the people of God. And we will give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. I've been commissioned by God just to give you a word of encouragement and strength. As we have entered into this, the second Sunday of the Last month of the year, I have been sent to admonish you, and here is the thought that I would have you to consider today, and hopefully we'll go out the same way we came in. Keep praising God. Keep praising God. The Bible is full of declarations that on a stand-alone basis will often sound ludicrous, silly, and quite honestly will sound like nonsense. If one does not believe God, and secondly, know God. Now, let me say it again, because I know I have challenged your theology. The Bible is full of declarative statements that on a stand-alone basis, meaning that if you were to take some of the verses out of the scriptures and put them in another book, apart from the holy scriptures, 
would sound ludicrous. They would be very silly and nonsensical if one does not believe in God and or know God. Now notice what I shared with you. First, I said that if one does not believe God before I said no God because to walk with God God says you cannot walk with me by knowledge mm. you must walk with me by faith you must believe me the Hebrew writer comes on the scene and the Hebrew writer says to us in the 11th chapter of the book of Hebrews, a very familiar passage of scripture, that but without faith, it is impossible to please him. Here it is. For he that cometh to God must be lead didn't say you need to know. He said simply, I need you to believe. I need you to take me at my word. You don't have to be analytical and figure out the mechanics of it. I simply need you to believe that I can do what I have said I would do. He that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Simply, you must believe. Now, when we deal with these standalone statements, for example, that would seem to be ludicrous and silly and nonsensical that God would make. Let me share with you we, uh, an example of this. Uh, we get to the sixth chapter of the book of St. John, and there the Lord has performed one of his greatest miracles. He has just fed a multitude of people and their stomachs have been filled. He's fed them off of two bread, two uh, pieces of bread and fi five loaves and two fish. You get it straight. And he goes through his discourse and he begins to share with the people that he has just fed. In his discourse, he starts to talk to them and in verse number 48, he says to them, I am the bread of life. Mm. He starts to lay a foundation for where he is headed with this ludicrous, silly, and nonsensical statement. He starts by saying, I am the bread of life. Verse number 51, he says to him, to the people, the multitude, he goes on to further embellish that statement and say, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. Now, if you do not believe God and either or know God, you are standing saying to yourself, what is he talking about? I am uh, the living bread. I am the bread of life. And then he puts the clincher on it. He says to us in verse number 53, he says, verily, verily, 
I say unto you, now we're going to really choke. Except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. And then 55, he tells them uh, uh, that my flesh is meat indeed and my blood is drink indeed. And the people began to look at one another and they began to discourse with one another. In verse number 60, he, they say to them uh, that are around, this is a hard saying, and uh, who can hear it? Uh, because unless you believe God and or know God, these stand alone statements of God can sound ludicrous to us, nonsensical, and my friend, silly. This is because the Bible, my friend, is written for believers only. Hear me, I know that might offend some, but hear me real good. The Bible is not written for everybody. In fact, you do yourself a tremendous injustice just to say, I'm going to read the Bible as if it's a bestseller on the marketplace. And to this day, after almost 2,000 years, the Bible still is a bestseller. But you cannot place the Holy Scriptures in the same category as a bestseller. You must give God's word its credence because the Bible is a spiritual book utilizing natural occurrences to amplify spiritual application. So now, my friend, as we go back, are you with me? Are you with me? Are you understanding? Did I help somebody with the standalone statements? Does that make sense to you? Or are you still grappling with that? Well, stay with me for just a moment, uh, and hopefully we'll be in the station uh, in just a second here. Uh, because as we go back to our text, uh, we find where the Apostle Paul has now attempted uh, to encourage and strengthen the church at Thessalonica, the church that he has, by the grace of God, established. And he makes some more stand-alone declarations that sounds ludicrous, silly, and just does not make any sense. Hallelujah to God. And I'm almost done. Hallelujah. He comes to us in this fifth chapter and where our text comes, we start with standalone statements that says to us, verse number 16, rejoice evermore. Glory to God. Help me, Jesus. Now, in this pandemic that we have been confronted with, Paul says, rejoice evermore. Now, he goes on to say 
that rejoicing is contingent upon the next two verses. Pray without ceasing. If you do not pray about it, you will not understand why you can yet rejoice in it. You must pray to God to reveal to you what this is that you have us going through. Pray without ceasing. And then he concludes, in everything he says to give thanks. Now, my friend, this is a chapter that has troubled me since I, or a verse that has troubled me since I was a little child. And it has troubled me because having grown up in church, my father being a preacher would ask me when I would fall and scrape my knees or if I broke something. And when I was a child, I was an accident prone child. I broke my leg. I, uh, was and when I grew up, I was still accident prone. Uh, glory to God, if it wasn't for the grace of God, uh, I wouldn't be standing here today. Uh, but my father would make uh, a strange statement to me uh, that is based upon uh, this particular passage uh, of scripture. Uh, he would ask me one simple question. He would say, did you thank God for it? And I would say, God, what am I thanking God for? I'm hurt. This does not feel good. Why do you want me to say, thank you, Jesus? I don't understand that. And so I grappled with this for a long time because I could not understand what he was saying to me. And truthfully, I did not come to a revelation of this until a few weeks ago when we were in our thanks, entering in to our Thanksgiving season when First Lady in the fourth watch of the night, the Lord woke me up and began to minister to me. He began to preach to me what the revelation was and he stands me here to share with you this morning the secret to the matter. He says here, the scripture says, in everything. Now, you've got to pay attention to the wording that he gives. He says that it is in everything. The linguist could have said for everything, but in the translation, he does not say for it. He says in it. There is a difference because God is highlighting location over occasion. Hallelujah to God. He is highlighting where you are and not what's happening to you. And he says, while you're in it, to give me thanks. Hallelujah to God. I can't get no help up in here. The scripture lesson said, pray for us. Are you praying for me? Hallelujah to God. He says here, in everything. Then he adds to the in everything, he adds insult to injury. He says that this is the will of God. Now, all of
of us have been asking, what is the will of God? We ask every morning, what is your will, God? Pointedly, the scripture declares that this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning us. Oh, come on here and clap your hands and give God some praise. Hallelujah to God. He says, this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. So declaratively, you if you don't know nothing else about the will of God, you have a declarative statement that says, in everything, give thanks, and this is God's will. Glory to God. He says here, now the secret the Lord spoke to me is in Psalms. It's 22nd chapter and another one of those standalone verses that when you read the scriptures, you would read right over it. But God said, Pay attention. He says, the secret is Psalms 22nd chapter and verse number three. I've got to hasten to my seat. He says here, but thou, O Lord, O, thou art holy. O thou, here it is, that inhabitest the praises of Israel. God said, when you're in it, you praise your way out of it. Glory to God. Because the secret is that God inhabits your praise. Glory to God. The word inhabit there is Yashab. And what it means is that God will come and he will sit down. Hallelujah. He will come and make his residence in your praise. He will come and dwell in the midst of your worship. When God steps in, God says, whatever you need without you asking because he is receiving your thanks and your praise. Come on, Johnny. We're out of here. Hallelujah to God. He says here, hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Let's practice right now. Whatever you're in, begin to give God the praise. The praise starts with saying thank you. Hallelujah. The praise starts with giving God all the glory. The praise starts with worshiping his name. Glory to God. Now, if you don't believe me, let me see if I can get a witness. Hallelujah to God. I think I'm going to step down into Daniel, where in Daniel we have the three Hebrew boys. Glory to God. The three Hebrew boys who are the people of God that have been taken out of their environment and placed in another environment and told to worship God. Hallelujah to God. But they found it difficult to believe God. But yet they 
they maintain the integrity of their faith. They were given a command, glory to God, to worship the king at that day. Like the United States has been given ultimatum to worship the president of the day. But we know in whom we believe. We know that Jesus, if we don't do it, he's able. Can I get a witness? Hallelujah. Glory to God. He's able. Come on, somebody. Shout he's able. Glory to God. He says, they say that these boys would not worship the king and the king got angry and set up a fiery furnace to throw them in. We're living in a time where the enemy is setting up a fiery furnace for the true worshipers of the most high God. But you've got to maintain the confidence that you have in the word of God. And so they threw them in to the fiery furnace. And when they threw them in, before they got there, the fire was so hot that it burned up the guys that were carrying them And the Bible said, the king looked in and he said, did not we throw in three? And he said, when they agreed with him, he said, I see a fourth one. Now, I don't know how this heathen king could know who the fourth one was. But he said it looked like the Son of God. Glory to God. What I believe is that the three Hebrew boys learned a lesson that we have been trying to amplify to you is to rejoice evermore.
Krishna. The song that says, no matter what the day may bring to you, keep praising God. Hallelujah, anyhow. Never let your problems get you down. When life's problems come your way, lift your hands up high and say, Hallelujah, anyhow. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word, Lord God, that you have spoken unto us on this morning. Father, you have shared with us what your will is and what your desire is. And God, now we have a greater understanding. But you still require us that in the midst of it all, to still give you praise. In spite of what it looks like, inside of it, give you praise. Father, in the name of Jesus, we confess, dear God, that what we have done in this season is complain because we had no understanding of where you were or what you were doing. But now we know. And Father, since we know, we will lift our hands up high and say, Hallelujah. Anyhow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anyhow. Never ever let your problems get you down. When your problems come your way, lift your hands up high and say, Hallelujah. Anyhow. Can you sing that with me, please? Never let your problems get you down. Never, never let your problems get you down. When your problems come your way, when you come, lift your hands up high. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Come on, say that again with us. Hallelujah. heard from God this morning and the Bible declares that even if we deny his word it still does not make his word untrue or without effect he's just kind enough to give us a warning to give us a notice before he makes a move. But he declares unto us this morning to pause, stop, and give him a praise in the midst of it all. I guarantee you that your day will go better. I heard somebody say, I have no reason to give God praise. Not for what I, where I am and not for even in the midst of it. Because everything has gone downhill since the pandemic. 
I want to tell you that God is a downhill God. He steps in the middle of what we are going through in order to raise us from where we are. Or raise our perspective about him. And he said, I'm a good God. That even in the midst of where you are, I can give you joy unspeakable. Beyond your imagination. He said, I hear you, I'm listening. How can I find that joy? I want you to know that the Lord is just a word away. Just open up your mouth and declare, God, I need you right now. Somebody said it only takes one word and God hears you. That one word is help. Open up your mouth right where you are and send that word up to God. Help! Mm. And God will answer you based upon the trueness of your call. If you still say, I hollered out help, now what do I do? I want you to do me a favor. Pick up that phone right now and call 330-747-4445 because someone is on the other end of that line that wants to tell you what to do, that wants to pray for you. Don't leave where you are without prayer. I don't care what you're going through, what you're experiencing, what it is, what it is not, how you feel, how you do not feel. We all need prayer. I want you to call that number, 330-747-4445. Not only will we pray with you, but we will lead you into a relationship with God. First of all, the man of God said, you must believe. And then after you believe, the Bible said, he that believeth, E-T-H, he that believeth going on to do what else God is requiring that we do. That is, he says, be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sin. The remission of your sin that you have repented of after you have declared that you believe. And the Bible promises that ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. What's the Holy Ghost? The Holy Ghost is the Spirit of God that comes to take its abode within your life. To help you to live this life. The Spirit of God is also that quickening spirit that when he steps out on the cloud and calls for his people to come, we which are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet him in the air. And so shall we ever be. Don't ever get, the, get it mistaken that this is all there is. That after this, you die and that's it. No. The way we live our lives on this earth, we've made our decision, either heaven or hell. Somebody said heaven and hell is not a real thing. Oh, it's a real thing. I would hate for you to live this life any way that you want. And then when it's all over with, then in hell you lift up your eyes and say, I should have done something. I would rather live for God here. And then when I arrive there, he said that you didn't have to do all of that. Then to arrive there, and he says that you didn't do enough. Or to lift up my eyes in hell and call on God. The Bible says that the man in hell asked if the rich man or if the, the, the beggar could go back and tell his brothers, 
don't come here. And here's the Lord's words. If they wouldn't hear you while that you are living, they're not going to hear you now. But I plead with you to make your relationship with God real right now. Because what's next on the horizon is God, the rapture. You don't want to be left. Call that number, 330-747-4445. And let us pray with you. I want to pray with you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, somebody, dear God, is standing between a decision and the rest of their life. Now, God, I ask you, don't allow this, the enemy to steal the word that has been planted within them. But God, allow them to take that word and respond to that word and be baptized in Jesus' name filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost, walking in a relationship with you. Father, I thank you because you're moving them even now to make the right, right move. And God, we declare and decree that it is so and it is done. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah, anyhow. this place the pastor wants me to remind you again those of you that are members of Mount Calvary Pentecostal Church please remember to bring your tithing and your offering offering is your thirty dollars your tithing is a ten percent of your increase into the storehouse there's several ways that you're able to do that you can go to cash app that's dollar sign MTC Youngstown or you could go to Givelify, look up Mount Calvary Pentecostal Church. You can mail it in. You can go to our website, www.calvary, the number four, the letter U, dot O-R-G, and you can donate there. Either way, Mount Calvary will receive that, and I believe that you shall be blessed. Why you shall be blessed? Because you abide it by the will of God. Once again, those of you that also have been enjoying this ministry, we're encouraging you to pour into this good ground. And I believe that God will bless you. God will keep you. God will lift you up in the name of Jesus. We're getting ready to go down from this place. Open your mouth one more time and declare, Hallelujah! you have spoken today Lord God I ask you to be glorified your name to be glorified in the earth and father help us to retain what you have said and apply it to our lives not to be just hearers of thy word but to be doers also 
the blessing is on the door. And God, we thank you right now. And we give you praise. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah! 